Now we're finally seeing an influx of custom GTX 680s. And well, okay, I shouldn't say influx because there's just plain not nearly enough of them. But uh, we are finally seeing some custom GTX 680s. So custom means custom PCBs, custom coolers, non-reference design cards. So this is the Galaxy GeForce GTX 680 SOC. So SOC stands for presumably super overclocked, okay? Comes with a three-year warranty, two gigs of memory, custom cooling, a Forsair bracket, and it has a pretty cool custom PCB, but I'm not gonna give that away until we get in a little bit further. So let's have a look what they have to say for themselves. Maximize your performance with GPU boost. So that is the GTX 680's ability to dynamically adjust its clock according to the available power thresholds. Okay, enjoy smoother gameplay with adaptive vertical sync, which either turns on VSync or turns it off to give you a, an FPS boost when you're below the refresh rate of your monitor and smoother gameplay when you're above the refresh rate of your monitor in terms of your FPS. Richer visuals, so you can surround yourself with multi-monitor gaming on a single card. So Nvidia has added that to their repertoire against the red team, which had, had been a bit, well, they were the only ones doing it for the longest time. I've even gotten like old 5870 Ifinity 6 edition in that system that uh, could do six displays off a single card, which was totally not that useful for gaming because it didn't have nearly the power to drive it. Take control with Extreme Tuner Plus, so that is their overclocking software. Very, very cool. All right, do more with multi-display. That was here, okay. Uh, Windows demands a real GPU. This much is true, although I can't say it demands a 680. I think it'll be a while before Windows demands a 680. Ultimate Home Theater with 1080p Blu-ray and HDCP support. If you game, you need a Galaxy graphics card, okay. Galaxy, turn it all on, okay. Let's go ahead and look at the card, because I think when you guys see the card, you are going to get pretty excited about this. So the GTX 680 is the cream of the cream for NVIDIA attention customers. Thank you, thank you, thank you for buying it, and don't forget to register your card. Um, it is their highest performing single GPU card. Probably their highest, well, okay. Their highest performing single GPU card, and it is really, 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 really fast. All the latest features, all that good stuff. HDMI to DVI adapter, uh, mini... What? Mini HDMI to HDMI adapter. Okay. Um, two dual Molex to six, eight pin power connectors. Okay. I haven't actually like looked at this card that closely other than like what I think is cool about it. So, okay, be sure to visit blah, blah, blah to get the latest extreme tuner. Uh, this is great. Okay, here's a disc, but be sure to visit the website to download the latest. Thank you, Galaxy. Uh, you have done it correctly, sirs and madams, because that is exactly how we roll here on Tech Tips. Here's the CD, download the latest. Oh yeah, look at that. Custom white PCB, which would go really well with a black and white themed system or in just any system. Um, I tweeted a picture of this on my uh, on my Twitter account of the Russian showing off one of these Galaxy super overclocked cards in a Vesta G2 system. It looked absolutely balling out with the green lighting effects on the back of the card. Oh, that looks so good. Just admiring it. I wonder what this means. It says Hall of Fame on the back of the card. I mean, I can understand this being Hall of Fame. I mean, just look at it, but I don't know why they had to label it as such. Okay, so on the back of the card, we can see very clearly that this is a custom PCB. It is very, very, very custom. It is much longer than the standard GTX 680 PCB. It also has dual six pin, or eight pin power connectors. So it is designed presumably with beefier VRM, and you can even see that there's a lot more built onto the card uh, than the stock card. It also has a much more substantial cooler. So this is triple 92 millimeter cooling fans on an impressive, I mean, this thing is really heavy. This is a heavy card on an impressive copper with five heat pipes and then aluminum fin array that goes the entire length of the card and then some. So you can see here where all the heat pipes are running to. This is a, uh, oh, okay. So this is a, uh, is this plastic or aluminum? It's a plastic shroud, but uh, here we go. Uh, so the GPU is right about there, right in between these two fans. These fans are covering almost the entire surface area of the card as well, blowing down not only on the GPU and the memory itself, but also on the other components. So the memory is covered in a heat spreader, and you can see where these heat pipes are heading off to. So a couple of them go pretty close, and then the farthest out one carries heat over here, 
The next farthest out one carries heat here, and the furthest out one on this side carries heat right to the end there. So, if we look at the positioning of the heat pipes and the fans, each fan is blowing down directly onto fins that are right near a heat pipe. So we should have heat being directly delivered. It's too bad they weren't able to put in one more heat pipe right here, but I guess you can't really ask for too much. In terms of outputs, oh, this is interesting. Okay, so we've got DisplayPort and three mini HDMIs. That is a very strange output configuration. I wonder why they did that. Um, huh, okay. Well, I guess I'd probably opt for a DisplayPort out of the three, just because Mini HDMI is not, uh, not the best thing in the world for outputting at uh, 120 hertz at 1080p for 3D. So, hold on just a minute, guys. Well, Galaxy does whatever they please when it comes to uh, outputs, it turns out. I mean, their MDT cards from the last generation were a great example of that, where they were like, oh, NVIDIA says we can only do two displays at a time. Well, we can do three. Ha ha. Um, so there you go. They've gone with DisplayPort and three mini HDMI connections. Um, you've also got an open sort of second PCI bracket. So what that means is this is very much an internal airflow card. So you're going to exhaust a little bit out the back of the case, but you better make sure you have a case with good airflow, which I hope if you're buying a GTX 680, you already had sort of figured out. Now of note is the fact that, okay, so two things. Of note is the fact that you see how easy it is to access the screws that hold these fans on. Can you see that? That's really cool. Take out three screws, pop the fan off, you can easily clean out your graphics card, get all the dust out of it, completely having removed the fans from it, and uh, I think that's a very cool feature. And the second thing of note, other than the fact that it has PCI Express 3.0 and two SLI fingers for up to three or four way configurations, is the fact that this has the whitest PCB that I have yet seen. I have seen products with white PCBs in the past, such as Sapphire's uh, Pure motherboard back on the 690G chipset for AMD. This is much whiter. This is like white white as opposed to like yellow white. So an example of a build that this would look absolutely fantastic in is one like this where the inner guts are predominantly black and white. So I would love to replace the Radeon graphics card in here with a uh, suitably white GeForce graphics card. So check this out. See? White and black theme. You go ahead, you throw one of these in there. How beast would that look? would barely even fit too, even though this is an arc media. This is a long graphics card. Uh, you know what, I think I have a tape measure here. Yep, let's measure how long it is because this must be close to 12 inches. All right, so from the back of the, there, so 11 and a half inches. So make sure you have a case that is capable of housing an 11 and a half inch graphics card before you go ahead and install one of these. So thank you for checking out my unboxing and first look at the Galaxy GeForce GTX 680 SoC. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.